The Biotech Project presents Gel Electrophoresis Using Biological Dyes. We will be using different charged biological dyes and separating them through a gel medium. The gel we use is a semi-solid made of agarose, a carbohydrate found in seaweed. This type of gel has pores to allow for the movement of materials. The way in which these materials move is by the process of electrophoresis. Electro implies the use of electricity. Phoresis means migration. We will be using gel electrophoresis to move several dyes in an agarose gel. You can also use this technique to observe differences in real life situations, such as analyzing DNA. First, we prepare an agarose gel. Melt the 0.8% agarose in TAE solution using a microwave until it looks as clear as water. Place the casting tray into the electrophoresis box. Place stoppers or tape at each end of the casting tray to create a seal before pouring your liquid agarose. Steadily pour the gel in the middle of the casting tray. The comb is placed in the middle because the dyes contain both positive and negatively charged molecules. We do not know which way these dyes will move. The gel should solidify in 5 to 10 minutes. Carefully remove the stoppers and comb. You should have a completely solidified gel with wells made by our comb in the middle. The electrophoresis box has electrodes on opposite sides. Black is negative. Red is positive. Pour a 1x TAE solution into the electrophoresis box to act as a buffer. Buffers are responsible for maintaining pH in solution. In this case, the buffer prevents our dyes from breaking apart by becoming too acidic or too basic, while electricity pulls the molecules of the dyes apart. We know that opposites attract when dealing with electricity. Just as can be seen with magnets, opposite ends attract while similar ends repel. Movement is based on charge, while separation is based on size. Recall that the molecules are moving through the pores of our agarose gel. Similar to a bear and a bunny running through a forest, an animal the size of a bear will take more time to get through the forest, while the bunny will speed through without much resistance. In this example, the trees are all spaced very close together and evenly, just as it is in any point in our gel. The bear represents the larger molecules, and the bunny represents the smaller molecules. So, it does not matter where you are in the forest, it is just as difficult to move, Negatively charged molecules migrate towards the positive electrode, red, and positively charged molecules migrate towards the negative electrode, black. Samples can be placed into the wells prior to adding buffer as well. Carefully pipette each dye into a well. Be sure to keep track of which sample you place into each well. Make sure your pipette tip is inside the well, but not piercing the bottom of the well. We are adding five biological dyes, and a sixth dye that is a mixture. Plug into a power source. Black to black and red to red. Turn on the power source. Allow for the electric current to run for 10 minutes at 150 volts. You should immediately notice bubbles at both electrodes. This reaction is the electrolysis of water, which is an oxidation reduction reaction, creating H2 gas at the negative electrode and O2 gas at the positive electrode. The molecules in the dyes will also be separated by size. The bigger the molecules in the dye are, the slower they're able to travel through the pores of the gel. Once the gel is complete, turn off the power source first. Unplug the electrophoresis box. Carefully remove the gel. Be sure to note which side is positive and which side is negative. Notice which bands move towards the positive electrode, these would be negatively charged, and which bands move towards the negative electrode, these would be positively charged. Some of the bands do not move as far as others. These would be larger dye molecules, whereas the bands that move the furthest would be smaller dye molecules. If you have a mixture of dyes, they will separate at the same rate as the single samples. 
You can see this in the red, purple, and yellow dyes. This technique is most commonly used to analyze DNA. We already know the charge of DNA, so we use this technique to analyze different sized fragments of DNA. This allows us to compare not only different individuals from a crime scene, but also to look at genetic variations as might be seen in dealing with genetic disorders.